Welcome to this video on a question from Beyond Premiere, and this is a trailer breakdown and plot details for episode 8 titled The Abyss of Life. So the episode description is the following. Turanaga defeated clan moves to Edo and awaits their fate. Black Thorn must decide who he fights for, the lord who has turned his back on him, or the envision that brought him to Japan in the first place. So the trailer opened with Lord issued a proposal of marriage to Ashiba. This is a calculated political move designed to consolidate his power and secure the future of her son, the Taiko's heir. By marrying Ashiba, Ishida would gain control of Osaka Castle and the wealth of the Toyotami clan. This will give him a significant advantage in his power struggle with Toronaga. However, Ashiba is aware and a smart woman, she knows Ishido's motives. She knows that marriage to Ishida would essentially make her a pawn in his game of power. Ashiba is also deeply devoted to her son and she wants to ensure his safety and his rightful inheritance. She's also concerned that Ishido's goals might put her son at risk. Ashiba is also faced with a difficult decision. On the one hand, marriage to Ishido would provide her son with protection and security. On the other hand, it would also mean surrendering her own power and potentially putting her son's future in jeopardy. Her decision will have a major impact on the balance of power and the future of the realm. What I'm excited to see is how episode 8 is going to see Turnaga and his defeated clan arrive in Edo, where they must await their fate at the hands of the council. Blackthorn, affected by Turnaga's surrender, is going to grapple with his loyalties. Should he remain faithful to the Lord who spare his life, or should he seize the opportunity to move on with his goals in Japan? Mariko -san, don't go to Osaka. My allegiance forbids me from doing anything else. Moving to the second part of the trailer where Blackthorn asks Mariko to leave her journey to Osaka, where she's met with a firm refusal. Rooted in her alliance to Toranaga, this allegiance comes from not only her position as his translator and confident, but also from a deep sense of personal loyalty and gratitude. Remember, Mariko's family was once brutally murdered by previous ruler of Japan, and Turunaga has offered her a path towards resolution and a chance to fight against injustice. However, Turunaga's recent surrender and his decision to travel to Osaka to face the council has left Mariko feeling conflicted and adrift. Her desire to serve her lord is going to clash with her own desire for peace and an end to the bloodshed. This internal struggle is further complicated by Blackthorn's influence as he challenged her commitment to duty and encouraged her to take control of her own destiny. Okay, so let's discuss Mariko, Blackthorn, and Muntaro. This is a complex one that is brought with tension, loyalty, and also conflicting desires. From the first meeting, Mariko and Blackthorn have been drawn to each other despite their different backgrounds and cultures. Mariko is initially intrigued by Blackthorn's ways and his spirit, while Blackthorn is captivated by Mariko's intelligence. As we saw in all the episodes, when they spend more time together, their bond deepens and they begin to challenge each other's beliefs and values. Blackthorn encouraged Mariko to question her commitment to duty and to embrace her own way. While well, Mariko helps Blackthorn to understand the complexities of Japanese culture and the importance of honor. However, their growing connection is complicated by Mariko's loyalty to Toronaga and her marriage, Montaro. But Mariko and Montaro have also had a strained and complicated marriage. While Mariko respects Montaro's skills as a warrior and his loyalty to Toronaga, she also has resents his controlling nature and his inability to understand her emotional needs. Bontaro, on the other hand, is deeply suspicious of Blackthorn and jealous of the bond he shares with Mariko. This jealousy has led to tension and conflict within their marriage, culminating in Bontaro's request to kill Blackthorn in Episode 7. <laughs> However, Turunaga denied, and we see Mariko's loyalty to her lord, which forced Bontaro to confront his own insecurities and reevaluate his relationship with his wife. Now, Blackthorn and Bontaro have a tense and conflicted relationship from the start. Bontaro sees Blackthorn as a threat to his marriage and a potential danger to Turunaga. However, this is going to be a complex dynamic between all these characters, which is going to create a compelling and emotionally charged storylines in the upcoming episodes. Their relationships are constantly evolving, shaped by the shifting political landscape and the personal challenge they face. Next Tuesday, one and all, 
Now the final moments of the trailer show Taranaga's men gathered in a tense meeting where they express their concerns over his decision to surrender to the council. The word this highlights the growing opinion within Taranaga's ranks and foreshadows the conflict that is to come. While episode 9 is titled Crimson Sky, this suggests that Taranaga will eventually move forward with his plan attack to Osaka Castle. His initial hesitation is significant. This reveals the complex and calculating nature of Taranaga's character. He's a man who understands the cause of war and the potential consequences of his actions. He's also deeply aware of the political landscape and the many different factions fighting for power. Taranaga's delay in launching his attack could also be due to several factors. He may be waiting for the right moment to strike when his enemies are not expecting. He may also be hoping to avoid bloodshed and find a peaceful resolution to the conflict. Additionally, Toronaga may be grappling with his own personal demons and the legacy of his family's violent past. Whatever the reason for his hesitation, Toronaga delay creates a sense of tension and anticipation for the audience. We know that war is coming, but we are unsure of when or how it's going to unfold. This keep us engaged and invested in the story and in the episodes ahead as we await Turnaga next move. Now, episode 8 is titled The Abyss of Life. The title suggests that the episode is going to explore the darker and more challenging aspects of human existence. This could also mean the physical dangers and hardships that the characters are going to face, such as war, imprisonment, and the threat of death. It could also refer to the emotional and psychological challenges they must overcome, such as grief, betrayal, and the struggle to find meaning in a chaotic world. On a deeper level, the abyss of life could also be a metaphor for the human condition itself. As you know, life is full of challenges and we're all ultimately faced with the choice of how to respond to them. We can choose to resist, to despair and give up, or we can choose to fight for what we believe in and find meaning in our struggles. In the context of the show, the episode title could be interpreted in several ways. It could mean the desperate situation that Turunaga and his clan find themselves in after their defeat. It could also refer to Blackthorn's internal conflict as he struggles to choose between loyalty and ambition. It could also refer to Miracle's journey of self-discovery as she confronts her past and embraces her own mind. But also, Turunaga is dealing with the immense grief of his son accidental dead, something that I cannot wait to see for Turunaga's character as he's forced to confront his own mortality and the fragility of life. Toronaga, as you know, is a very deep character and his grief will likely manifest in multiple ways. He may become withdrawn or as we can see, maybe he's going to be a far away from everything. Now, this part of the video, I'm going to be discussing some minor spoilers for episode 9, which is, which is titled Crimson Sky. Despite his initial hesitation, as we know, ultimately decide to move forward with his plan to attack Osaka Castle. This could be triggered by a number of factors such as Ishido's growing aggression but also betrayal. Blackthorn, I imagine, is gonna be despite his anger and he choose to remain loyal to Toranaga and use his qualities and skills to fight in the war. And Mariko, as we know, she's gonna go to war in Osaka Castle going from the images and from the trailer where she's gonna fight but these are some of the scenarios that can unfold in episode 9 and I cannot wait to see this. But episode 8 promised to be a pivotal point in the story as each character is forced to confront their own personal abyss and make choices that will shape their destinies and the future of Japan. My name is Christian from BM Premiere and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye everyone.